You want to be president? You ain't no man. Maybe we should find your mother. All you got is your one vote. You sound just like every other politician. Do I look like every other politician? Freedom! Truly, you can't win. And why can't I win? I have an opportunity to make a difference. This isn't a campaign. It's a joke. The only thing anybody's gonna remember is that there were a bunch of black folks who made fools of themselves. I'll kill you! See too much suffering. And I don't know how to not try. Good afternoon and welcome to Washington Post Live and another in our series, Race in America, co-produced with the Capehart Podcast. I am Jonathan Capehart, Associate Editor at the Washington Post. Shirley Chisholm was a groundbreaker. She was the first black woman elected to Congress in 1968. And she was a trailblazer in 1972 when she became the first black candidate to run for a major party's presidential nomination a campaign where she famously declared that she was, quote, unbought and unbossed. That historic campaign is being retold in the new movie, Shirley. In the title role is Academy Award-winning actress Regina King, and she joins me now. Regina King, welcome to Capehart on Washington Post Live. Hi, Jonathan, thank you. Oh, it is! Oh, it's it is, so great to see you. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna fan girl out uh, all throughout this, so you're just forewarned. Um, okay. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about Shirley. This film has been a passion project for you and your sister Raina for the last 15 years. What drew you both to Shirley Chisholm's story? Um, I guess first and foremost, uh, the fact that growing up even in our uh, young adult years, uh, so many people had never even heard her name. And it just seems like uh, for her to, uh, I feel like be such a part of uh, the American fabric and people not know her name, not uh, know just what she represents uh, as far as someone having the guts and the um, audacity to do what at that time uh, seemed um, impossible or, um, you know, like a, a fool's journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, not only was it not a fool's journey, um, she um, represented the possibility of what can be done when a person is audacious. Right. You know, a lot has changed in the United States politically in the 15 years that you've been trying to, to get Shirley made. How did our present day political landscape inform your understanding of all she was up against back then? You know, Jonathan, I'll be honest, I still marvel at, at, at how she was able to keep going and not give up. Um, with all that she was up against back then, having the knowledge of what um, any politician, let alone a woman and black, um, is up against now, um, I, I still marvel at, at, at the at the fact that she was able to uh, do it and make it seem as you know we were doing our research. Most of the things that we would see were her speeches um, or um, hearing her. I, I, there was a lot of, lot of audio that uh, um, we got to get from the Schomburg, who was so uh, uh, great. I mean, I, that was like I had fallen into um, just a gift, a, a gift of Shirley wealth. Um, with the tapes that they had, because I got to hear her tell stories, and um, I, I went off on the, mm -hmm. I, I, I went back in time, uh, but um, just uh, having that, I totally lost my train of thought there. <laughs> 
That's okay, Regina, because I, I, I want to pick up on the fact that you listened to um, audio recordings of Shirley Chisholm because you, you I, I love this. Um, um, in, in some of the notes, uh, in my research I found, you said, I was faced with the biggest challenge ever with trying to embody this woman who is probably one of the most unique beings I've ever studied. Just her dialect alone was terrifying. Um, that <laughs> that jumped out bourgeois at me. politics. If all you're doing is outside yelling and screaming, that's all you're ever gonna be. A yeller and a screamer. You have to be part of the process. The so um, we gave folks a little bit of taste uh, of of the um, of Shirley Chisholm's dialect there, and I believe that's her talking to Congresswoman Barbara Lee, um, who wasn't a congresswoman back then. She was a, right. a, a young woman then. But talk about, why, one, why you were so terrified uh, by, by just sort of learning her dialect. And then we'll talk about the importance of Barbara Lee. Right. Um, because uh, Shirley is um, this amalgamation of uh, her, her voice, of a person born and bred in Brooklyn, um, a, a person that's from Bayesian descent and spent her early years back in Barbados her, because her parents sent her and her sisters uh, back to Barbados so that their, uh, her grandmother can raise them while her parents uh, worked and uh, created a better space for them to live once they come back to Brooklyn, and also an intellect. So you've got the combination of all of that. And as I was listening to all of this audio of Shirley, I could hear where sometimes you could hear the Bayesian a little more. Sometimes you could hear Brooklyn a little more. Sometimes you just heard the teacher. Sometimes you just heard the scholar. And um, it was just fascinating uh, the places in which you heard the mashup of all three or where one, uh, one um, one style of, of her dialect was coming through um, stronger than others. And I had to choose when and where those changes were going to happen. But it also was a great study of, of human beings, because then I started paying attention to all people, like family members mm -hmm. and friends. And our dialect changes depending on who we're talking to depending uh -huh. on what you're talking about. And so just um, determining when to lean more into the Bayesian or lean more into the scholar or lean more into speaking quickly uh, or when to, because she would slow it down sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she would speed it up and be like lightning speed. Uh, and I'm just like, how did she say all that without running out of breath? Oh my God. <laughs> Um, to, to your point, you know, the way we are speaking right now, Regina King, would be a lot different than if we were together in a re <laughs> together over drinks. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's talk about Congresswoman Barbara Lee, because, um, and we just showed the clip of Barbara Lee um, being talked to by Shirley Chisholm because she tells Shirley Chisholm, and Congresswoman Lee told me this story herself. She told uh, Shirley Chisholm, Congresswoman Chisholm, that she wasn't even registered to vote. Um, and she, Congresswoman Chisholm said to her, little girl, <laughs> you better go register and vote. What did you learn from Congresswoman Lee about Shirley Chisholm and how Shirley Chisholm impacted her life? Um, I think one of the things that like stuck with me the most um, in talking to Representative Lee is that, um, and sometimes I call her Barbara, sometimes Representative Lee, uh, uh, that um, something about Shirley, like she kind of had this secret power uh, of being able to see um, in people what they didn't see in themselves, especially young people. And um, just, uh, you know, she was a young mom at the time. Uh, and, and, and people will see when they tune into the film just her position in politics and just that conversation with Shirley, how it just kind of turned um, her all the way around as far as just how her regard for the political process and uh, her 
uh, regard for herself in the political process. And Barbara Lee is part of Cheryl Lee's legacy. You know, I think um, uh, Shirley Chisholm would be so proud uh, to see that not th that Barbara Lee, she was lucky enough to see um, her run and, 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 and win and, and celebrate that. And, uh, but to see her to continue to, as Shirley Chisholm says, fight the good fight, he um, mm -hmm. would be uh, so proud. You know, um, actually, in her book, that, that was the name of, of Shirley Chisholm's book um, in 1973. It was called The Good Fight. And she reflected on why she ran for president, writing, quote, the next time a woman runs or a black or a Jew or anyone from a group that the country is not ready to elect to its highest office, I believe he or she will be taken seriously from the start. The door is not open yet, but it is ajar. Uh, what did her campaign symbolize to you? I mean, that's just, that's the perfect uh, quote to take out of, um, of that book. And that book was, as you know, about the, that, the experience of that uh, 72 um, um, campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, I think exactly that, you know, that, first of all, to be the first at something, there is no blueprint. You know, you're actually creating the blueprint. And thank God for people who do, uh, because it, it, it allows us the opportunity to know that, oh my gosh, it is possible. Because um, we're human beings, right? And most human beings, we're, um, we're doing things, we're interested in things because we've seen someone else do it first. Um, now, people that come along, do they do it better? Hopefully, you know, that's kind of the point. Um, do they um, have more support? Hopefully, because the blueprint has already been uh, set. But um, with Shirley in particular, uh, she was doing something that, you know, a black person of, and a woman, mm -hmm. we had never seen do. And um, she understood that. She understood that going into it probably won't win. But if I don't do it, then who? Someone right. has to. If not now, then when? Mm -hmm. And to have the guts to do that is remarkable. And because of that, that we, we uh, because of her understanding that it was necessary now, uh, cut to 50 years later, you know, we have um, a, a Hillary Clinton, uh, President Barack Obama, um, and all of the other black or female politicians that um, ran for president or ran for a office higher than a council member. Um, uh, I think we can uh, thank Shirley for yeah. that. You know, there, uh, coming back to, to Congresswoman Lee, did she ever tell you the George Wallace story? Uh, uh, I, I want to ask, cause I'm not sure if okay. it is so, the same story that's in the film, because I don't want to uh, spoil so it for I, anything. So I, 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 I'm going to sort of briefly tell it, because there was a scene in the, in the movie where she's sitting and talking with someone where she says, um, I would break bread with the devil if it made him more Christian. And when I heard that line, it made me instantly think of this fantastic um, story that both Congresswoman Lee told me, but also the daughter of George Wallace told me about how during the presidential campaign, Shirley Chisholm took off from the campaign trail and went to visit George Wallace in the hospital. And one young Barbara Lee was mad as hell about, mad as hell about it. It's a, it is a fantastic, a fantastic story and confluence of, of events in, in history. Yeah, and, and that uh, she, it, that's mad as hell at that time, but lived a little more life and understood 
uh, why and the importance of it, because um, Shirley went on and Sh Shirley Chisholm and George Wallace uh, later in life um, um, uh, wrote uh, legislation that, you know, made a, a huge difference in, mm. in our lives. And um, I don't think that that would have happened. I don't think, um, you know, I, I, honestly, I'll even take it a step further. The guts and the, um, uh, the nerve that Shirley had and it's still able to speak so eloquently as she's delivering um, her message uh, along the way, I think gained so much respect from politicians that were on the other side of the aisle that they were wanting and willing to work with Shirley to come up with so many um, different pieces of legislation that mm -hmm. um, any changes in just our wages and um, uh, equanimity. Uh, and, and I don't think that that would have happened if they didn't see th how this woman persevered um, throughout this campaign. You know, they know how grueling um, campaigning is, just as white men, they know how grueling it is, let alone as, um, as, as, as she was so often called, a little school teacher from Brooklyn, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I know when Congress Lee shares that story, she understood later in, in life uh, the importance of that moment. Yeah, and, and George Wallace's daughter, Peggy Wallace Kennedy, um, uh, has told me that, and she was in the hospital room when, they ha when Shirley Chisholm visited, and she says, Peggy Wallace Kennedy says, that it was that visit, she believes that visit from Shirley Chisholm is what started the change in, in her own father. So Shirley Chisholm had many famous, memorable quotations, as you well know, like saying, just don't ever accept things the way they are. I'm wondering, were there a certain, was there a certain speech or a quote of Shirley Chisholm's that resonated most with you? Oh, wow, there were so many. And I, I got the opportunity to listen to, as I said, so, so, so much um, Shirley uh, that I guess, you know, you could ask me this an hour from now and, and something <laughs> come to my mind, or, you know, a couple days from now and something else will come to my mind. But, you know, her, her, one of her slogans on the campaign trail was unbought and unbossed. And uh, one of the, I, I was reading something that she had signed and she had written a line and um, uh, she put in quotes, no gimmicks. And that just, always stuck with me because it is, it, while it's so simple, it is who she is. She was not gimmicky, but yet um, um, she is kind of like um, so many people who don't know Shirley Chisholm's name, they see a picture of her and, and they, oh, I've seen that woman before. Mm -hmm. uh, that was who she was, how she presented. Um, uh, one of the greatest orators we've we've probably ever witnessed. Some of her speeches, I mean, it's like listening to music. Hmm. Uh, the way she um, goes in, and it's it's almost like a song. Uh, but n never at any point of any it, 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 anything that I've listened to any question that she was asked that she responded to ever sounded like it was not coming from anything but her heart. And I, I think that's a rare thing um, in politicians. Um, and so I, I, I just, I'm just, you asking me that question and what popped in my mind is literally looking at her handwriting that said no gimmicks in mm. quote. Uh, yeah. So right now, at this moment, that's my favorite show. That's Shirley. it. Uh, yeah, no gimmicks. <laughs> no gimmicks. <laughs> so, you know, as we've said before, Shirley Chisholm was the first black woman elected to Congress. She was the first black person to run for a major party's presidential nomination. And so her presence alone spoke to the intersections 
of race and gender. Yet in the film, you capture how she didn't feel fully embraced by the civil rights movement or the women's right, rights movements. Why do you think she was such an outlier to those two movements? Well, I mean, another thing that comes along with being first is that um, you have quite a few people that wish or think that it should be them. Mm -hmm. And I know that she was receiving a lot of that along the way, um, especially when it came to the black male politicians. You know, she did have support of some, but uh, they felt like she wasn't... Um, being a good little girl and 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 staying in line and you know we've got a we've got a plan on how we're going to put our first um, uh, black um, uh, a, a politician on the ticket and you know you you are uh, breaking the plan and for her it was like okay well y'all just talking and y'all doing a lot of talking and I don't see any doing, so I'm gonna go do this. And um, her doing that brought a lot of, as we call them today, haters. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like that's a part of it. Um, and I feel like when it comes to the women, um, we see like when Trump got elected, there was a lot of women that voted for him just because I think some women still have antiquated thoughts and don't feel like we can represent ourselves and the entire country um, with power. And uh, so because they don't see it any other way, this is what, um, this is how I'm going to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a combination of that, and I can probably go into a bunch of other things that I think that come along with um, the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, at that time, I think either women either just started being able to open up a bank account without a man, or either it hadn't started quite yet. But you know, can you imagine? You know, I, I know for sure when she was running for Congress a woman couldn't open a bank account without um, her husband's man. signature. Without her husband's signature. I mean, it, bananas. And and here she is in this space running for office. You know, uh, that's like, how dare you? <laughs> and that makes it, you know, for some, sometimes when it's something you've never seen or heard or smelled or smelled before, uh, it, it's just so foreign that your head spins. It, it can't be. It's, you know, like you put in a wrong, a different code into the matrix. And so everything starts <laughs> going crazy. And the, you see the glitch and the cat comes back a couple of times. <laughs> like what, what's happening? I, I think there was a lot of that, you know? Oh, yeah. And you know what, Regina? There is a scene, an, another scene in the movie that sort of speaks to this. And it's the one where she's walking through the halls of Congress. And there's a white member of Congress who, you know, stops her and says the same thing he says, as she points out that, you know, he says the same thing to her every time he sees her in the week that they've been in Congress together. And it's the fact that they both make, he can't believe that she's making $42,500, the same salary as he, a white man. And she, she sort of reads him for filth. Um, yeah. And it gets to something that you've said uh, in, in an interview where she could curse somebody out without ever using a curse word. Yes. Uh, Barbara Lee and, and her goddaughter Maria both shared that with me. So I was like, oh, yeah, so we, we have to make sure we uh, find a way to um, get that moment in because there is something about um, the idea that someone could be so um, swift with their tongue and their words that you actually feel cursed out and you haven't, there was not one curse word uttered. That's powerful to me. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, so there was never a moment where someone could say that she was disrespectful, right? 
uh, even though they felt huh, disrespected. I'm sure his head was spinning. And there were a lot of uh, exorcism moments for a lot of those uh, white male politicians at that time, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. They're like, how, how dare you speak to me? <laughs> <laughs> speak to me in that way. Um, I got to ask you one more question about Shirley Chisholm before I ask some of my, my fangirl questions. Um, what do you think defines Shirley Chisholm's legacy? Mm. Well, one, I think that the Barbara Lee is a, a, a just a kind of tangible walking, talking example of, uh, or, or representation of uh, Shirley's legacy. But um, I think Kamala Harris also uh, is. Um, I feel like if I was just gonna put it into words, um, she, as they say, spoke truth to power, and um, just the her life and time in um, Congress uh, shows that when you just drop a pebble in the water, how it just reverberates, it just ripples out. Um, she is an example. Of, and I keep wanting to say living example, uh, but that she's still alive. Um, my hope is that um, that there are going to be youth that are inspired when they see um, Shirley's story. If it's just two or three that mm -hmm. are inspired to want to use their voice and become part of the political process, not just the voters. But and you see, I did this because unfortunately, I have no desire to run for office. However, I am a great boots on the ground supporter, supporter for those mm -hmm. that uh, and, and that, um, and, and there are some young, um, uh, politicians right now who make me feel like they have this um, this new energy and uh, um, uh, something in them that can spark growth in people. Uh, growth is change to me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so yeah, that that's yeah. I, that's what I hope happens when people see. Uh, and that and that those who don't have the, the gumption to want to run for and when I say run for office, I'm talking about like those local um, um, positions that really affect our day to day life. Right. Even more than a, a president, you know, your 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 mm -hmm. council members and all of that really determine how your day to day life is yeah. looking, feeling. Um, so um, I just hope the, the the younger people that are out there, that they are also people my age, that uh, they feel that we are supporting them and we are boots on the ground and we believe in their ability to affect change. We, we, we got about 90 seconds left. Now, okay. I loved you in If Bill Street Could Talk. Um, I thought you were fantastic in The Harder They Fall, but my, Perhaps my favorite movie that you're in that I put on whenever I need to have a movie I know on in the background while I'm writing, Enemy of the State. Uh. I just love, <laughs> love you in that, in that movie. Of all the movies you've done and television shows, which one's your favorite? That is always so tough whenever I'm asked that question because I'm blessed enough to have done a lot for a long time. Um, so I always end with my favorite is the one that I'm working on now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, you know, that is actually a fabulous segue, uh, and a great way. So what, so what are you working on now real quick? Uh, I am working on, uh, 
Well, uh, I'm wrapping up in the final stages uh, for a, a, um, a show that I produce with David E. Kelly um, that is called A Man in Full. It is a book adaptation of Tom Wolfe's book, A Man in Full. It's a mini series uh, that stars Jeff Daniels um, and oh. Diane Lane and Tom Pelfrey and William Jackson Harper. I mean, it is. Uh, an amazing cast, Lucy Liu. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. And that comes out a little later in the year, I think around the summer or end of spring. Um, I have to check the dates, but uh, we're in our final stages of wrapping that all up. And so, yeah, it's exciting. I directed three of the episodes along with Tommy Shalami. We kind of powered up and uh, split the three episodes up and, um, just had a great time and, uh, you know, I, I'm excited about that. Am I right in remembering, did you direct an episode or more than a few episodes uh, episodes of Watchmen? No, I didn't, didn't direct any episodes of Watchmen. Whoo, that was a heavy lift. I would have, <laughs> oh, I don't know if you'd be speaking to me right now if I tried to direct and, and, and star in that. That was, yeah, that that was, was a big one, yeah. Yeah, but that was that was good too. There's nothing there's nothing you you're in that I don't like. Regina King, Academy Award winning actress and star of the movie Shirley. Thank you so much for coming to K-Part on Washington Post Live. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much for having me and making me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I want to see you in person. Yes. We will make that yeah. happen. All right. And thank you for joining us for more of these important conversations. Sign up for a Washington Post subscription. Get a free trial by visiting wapo.st slash live. You see it there on the screen, w-a-p-o dot s-t slash live. Once again, I'm Jonathan Capehart, associate editor at The Washington Post. Thank you for joining Capehart on Washington Post Live.